<laughs> happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy, 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 Happy. I'm sure there's 1,500,000 that I've missed. I'm not as cultured as a bucket of yogurt, as they say. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I missed a holiday. Maybe it's the summertime when you're seeing this. Point being, welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I am Brett Papa, and today is all about my favorite blues licks I cannot live without. Now, a lot of this is going to be just little pieces of licks that when chained together sound like these shreddy, crazy blues stuff. Now, I like to think of my favorite kind of blues would be like Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of stuff or Hendrix, but like the aggressive, angry stuff like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood, Red House, that kind of stuff, or like Frank Marino, right? Mahogany Rush, if you don't know Frank Marino, do yourself a favor. Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush Live, there's like King B and some of these other songs that are just Johnny Be Good. His version of Johnny Be Good is terrifying blues playing, but also like a lot of the great 80s shredder guys like Warren D. Martini and Van Halen and all these other guys had really awesome blues licks, but they just sounded aggressive. And that's what I like a lot, the aggressive sounding blues licks. I wanna cut on myself if I hear like three shuffles in a row. Like if I go to a blues jam and it's just shuffle, 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 I'm like, ah! I, uh. Now, that's not, that's just my opinion. I mean, you know, shuffles are great. I, I heard some the other night that were awesome, actually. And I was like, cool, man, but I just need variation. So, blues licks, aggressive blues licks. How do you make blues licks aggressive? We'll get to that in just a second. People always ask, tone today, 75 or 74, 50 watt Marshall. I got off my buddy Corey Congelio, bless his heart for selling me that, uh, into a Archer pedal, it's the Jeff pedal. I got a link to that below on my Sweetwater page. So if you want one of those, check this out. This, pick, this pedal is so good. So check this out. Here's the tone. That's just the head. And then you add the pedal. It's so good, I love that thing. Uh, Tuttle Strat, uh, this is a custom pick guard. I, I hate the uh, knob here, so there's only two knobs, but this is the, I think the classic S is what it's called. And then the pickups are Loller Special, Special 64, I think it's called now. I think it used to be called the Blackface, but now it's 64, so I don't know, something like that. The 60s style strap pickup on the Loller site. Okay, so how do we make a blues lick, or what are my favorite blues licks, but how do you make them sound tough and aggressive and mean like you're at a scantily dressed establishment where people and there's poles and not that I've been to one, but I've seen them on movies, dancing, smoke, you know, the kind of stuff that makes fathers wanna cut and you just strangle somebody if they throw that kind of song on and their daughter's in the room. Like, Don't do that! <laughs> <laughs> Picture what Miley Cyrus would dance to in a bar. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, so anyways, we want to, this is kind of the, almost like the two Rolling Stone vibe on a Robin Char. How did I forget Robin Char? Robin Char is another one, but anyways. So the idea is we're gonna take the basic framework and we're just gonna modify it. Little things, sometimes we're just gonna, it's how we hit the notes, how we attack them and our phrasing and our dynamics that makes them sound tough because you can take a lick and you can make it sound Those aren't out of the way blues licks, like that's stuff that you'll find, but it's how you're playing those notes, the tone, the sound, the distortion, how you're picking it, right? The volume in which you're picking things. Are you muting some of the phrase? Are you using like, you know, pinch harmonic? 
Those are things that right off the bat, you can take standard blues licks and make them sound tough. Think Billy Gibbons. He's like a perfect example of killer, aggressive blues phrase. He, I don't even know why I didn't say him either. Billy Gibbons, right? Just taking those, digging into those. <laughs> Right, Lagrange, right? Think of all that kind of killer phrasing, and it's the. Sometimes it's the cadence in which you play, or the, you know, this kind of a Jimmy Page thing. That kind of thing can make licks sound cool too. So it's not like you gotta learn a bunch of new tricks. A lot of times it's just how you play the notes that starts to make them sound tougher. Then there's things that you can add, right? Notes that aren't in the scale, like the flat five. Right, so it's... Right, that's automatically gonna... See, that sounds cool, but... Versus typical versus then when you mix those two things together, like starts to sound really cool. Now, a huge part of this is intervals. Okay. And I'm going to get to specific licks in just a second, but intervals, how you're playing the notes, what I call stacking, right? Playing the notes that are right on top of each other. Right? Not just playing, but I always am doing that. And when you think about that, playing the notes that are right on top of each other, it's like what a chord is like. It's almost like playing an arpeggio, right? So, Now, intervals, how you play the notes, sometimes you mute stuff, sometimes you do pinch harmonics, right? So, just really playing those light. So all of these things are gonna come into play, <laughs> no pun intended, when you start to learn these kind of licks. Okay, so, so some of my favorite blues licks. Love that one. Use it all the time. A lot of my favorite blues licks are in position one. So I'm cheating. I'm using a little hybrid picking. Now this, so I go, right? Pick. And I hammer that. Okay. So the secret to this lick pluck hammer it's not even a pick okay so that's hammered hammer and then i pick so when i when i'm do, when i want to when i want to when i'm done doing this i'm only picking those two notes this note is a hammer on Right? It's kind of like this. It's just different notes, right? Same kind of feel, same kind of timing, right? Now, one of the things I like to do to get out of that is I'll go. Okay, so this is typical scale. I add this note right here. So 
so. Stack. So I go. See that? And then I'll do. Or some version of that. This. It's a Van Halen lick. It's in every solo. One of my favorite licks that he does. He does it in everything that's in Hot for Teacher. It's in Panama. It's in just like, I think it's in Somebody Get Me a Doctor. It's in like so many of the freaking awesomest solos that he does. It sounds so aggressive. I think he does it with his first finger, but I, I cheat and use my second finger because it. Or. There it is. Now, the other one I do, and it depends if we're just playing in minor or major, but. Love that one. All right, so it's stacking. And then, so then I do a chromatic. And then, that last part is. You hear Stevie Ray Vaughan do that kind of stuff all the time. Hendrix too. Or. Now the Texas flood kind of thing. Start getting used to, again, the interval things really make things sound more aggressive, right? And it's it's one of those things that kind of make notes pop out. You know who's amazing at intervals? Now it's not blues like this, but Rick Beato. So his Instagram, he has these like lessons and it's like, the only thing I can equate it to is like super cool sounding modern classical kind of runs. You'll see him do it. He'll, he'll, he'll practice over like an F Phrygian or some chord progression and does these sick interval gaps. So when you start to hear that and start to train your ear that like you don't just have to go like this, you can jump all around. it starts to make things open up and sound more interesting. And then when you add that feel, dig into those notes, you know, maybe you're hitting a bend. Right, so it's a little bit of, see, I, I raked into it. Didn't get all the way to the note. Take your time getting there. Right? The other one, the Hendrix bend. You're gonna bend up on the B string in this instance. Then use your second finger to come down on the ninth G. So I'm bending 10B. Roll your fingers over and grab, when the strings crunch together, grab that G.
Now another Van Halen lick. Maybe it wasn't Van Halen, maybe it was Billy Gibbons, right? But walking down. Remember I said the flat five? That note right there? It's that note. Right, it's just an octave. So, awesome way to walk down. So I'm just kind of copying. Right, that's just one way to do it is just play the same thing in the octaves. Now another thing people do when they're descending, they typically just go. One of the things I like to do is kind of go forward and down at the same time. When I do a lot of the fast stuff, I don't go, it's, right? Because it's all, you always hear, but, It's cool to kind of switch directions as you're going descending, right? You can kind of switch, it's a little switch maru. Okay, so another thing I'll do, remember how I reached out? Right there? I do that in position two. You know this in position three where you hear that walk down? I like that. That's another one of my favorites. Right? So, that part. I just borrow that note. Now, we're in minor. Another one of my favorite things is to throw the major third in there, but. But we're in minor right now, so. Ryan Warner showed me that one. Ryan Warner is another guy. If you guys don't know who he is, he's got it. He's more active on Instagram. His dad is Steve Warner, the country music legend. But Ryan is a terrifying, like blues rock. I ain't play anything, but like his blues rock phrasing, like this kind of stuff, is insane. Really good with feel, really, really good with bending and making things sound really soulful, right? Great player. Try to find him, Ryan Warner, on Instagram. You'll thank me later. Okay, so. Doug Rappaport, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll see if I can get all these guys back on the channel. I haven't had Rappaport on, but we've talked about it. And, man, that is another person. Doug Rappaport. Go check him out. So if this is all players that have that like terrifying just aggressive blues thing down pat right so the hammer-ons a lot of the trick is taking the typical and just mixing it up right right not just right you can And then, right? Find out where you can make three notes happen in a row. Because it. That one, I love that. And I'll usually chase it, chase it down with. 
But see how you can start to put these little ideas together with other licks, right? Right, typical blues lick. Or, right, so. And then. That's typical blues, but. Right, so. Right, see how I'm starting to add them all together, right? Same licks we've done. Right, so what I would do is I would just stick in one position for a while. Love that position one. There's so many good, you know, things because you got these bends. Right? That's another one I love. That's a Hendrix one. So you can bend up and then slide up to position two. Instead of going... That's another one, just really simple. But when you start to add all these things together, and then you start to add that aggressive, <laughs> Excuse me. I need some water. That aggressive picking style, maybe the muting like we were talking about. Right? Really kind of. Or the double stop thing is cool too. Playing out of other positions too, like position two, the lower strings, most people don't use it, but it's awesome. Think of it, it's the same thing. But it's just right here. I don't know why it took me so long to think about this, but like think about the notes themselves, right? And where they are in the other positions. And then it was like, why am I not doing this? Because I love the sound of these intervals. And I'm like, why am I not finding that interval, these two, in other spots, right? Because it sounds so cool. Right, using that step and a half. Right, so think about doing that, right? That's another way to make stuff sound unique and cool is use bigger intervals, right? Again, like these are bigger intervals. But that third. Right? Yeah, I love that one.
So as you can tell, I love the chromatic thing. It, I like the the three notes in a row. I'm a child of the '80s, so all of the, like the. <laughs> I knew how to do all that stuff, but I could never play pentatonic stuff fast, right? I can't do the Eric Johnson thing, the Doug Rappaport thing, the Bonamassa, where they just fly through two notes per string. It's really tough for me to do. So whenever I can put three notes in a row, like this, it helps me get a lot of speed. Anyways, those are some of my favorite like position one licks. Start messing around with that. Again, it's dynamics, muting, stuff like pinch harmonics, taking the obvious lick, whether it's like and seeing if you can stretch it out. Or right instead of going. Right? Even that, that sounds cool, right? And then also, you know, use it sparingly. Don't always do that kind of stuff. Mix in the typical and then throw in that kind of stretchy stuff or the flat five to add spice. Don't overuse it, right? Try using your own phrasing and then just kind of throwing it in there a little bit for speed or flash or to get from one chord to another, or like a crescendo or whatever at the end of a solo and you wanna get some flash in there. Try not to overuse it and try to make stuff sound, the typical stuff sound cool with feel, right? Even like. <laughs> All that kind of stuff, where it's, love doing that. I'll practice doing that stuff all the time. That's enough. I could go on for hours. <laughs> it's been a while. I hope you guys enjoy that stuff. People ask me about those kind of licks all the time. So if you want to see more of that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments section below. If you want to support the cause, so many of you guys out there have supported me at brettpapa.com. That's how I do everything. That's from the gear to being able to put on shows to, you know, demoing stuff. All this stuff is made possible by you. So your generosity goes towards all of this and all of this community is built because of people like yourself out there. It's awesome. So if you want to do that, brettpapa.com below, Cage Unleashed, Hendrix Courses. The membership has all my courses as, long, uh, as well as a couple other people's courses in there. Shh. And then also, if you're curious about the gear I use, I have a Sweetwater page. And it's basically everything I use, except for the divided by 13s and like vintage amps, all in one spot. Everything you see there is stuff that I have and that I use all the time. I didn't put on anything on there that I don't like or wouldn't use or don't use on a consistent basis. So check that out if you're interested in my gear. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. We'll catch you next time.